yeah, so my name's Jeff Herman. Uh, I graduated Case Law School in 1985. And uh, right now um, I am based in Florida. My practice is exclusively representing victims in civil sexual abuse cases. Um, I have a national practice. I do these cases around the country. I have offices in New York and California and New Jersey. Um, and uh, so I got to case um, because it was a place I literally always wanted to go to law school. I grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, and had always heard great things about, about case. Um, went to college out west, but wanted to come back home to Ohio to go to law school, which I did. And I was fortunate enough to be able to attend a case law school. And I think I had a great experience there. Um, when I look back on my, my days in law school, um, what I think is most important for me is the foundation I got there and, and the perspective of being able to kind of think critically and learn to be prepared. Um, and when I say that, I learned to be prepared um, by sometimes being prepared in class and sometimes not being prepared in class. And what I learned from that is, and these professors were great and they, they held us to a high standard. Um, and from there, you know, I think my entire practice now, I've always been uh, pr well prepared uh, going into court and handling any case. And um, I think that's, that has served me well. Um, one of the other, um, I think, really influential things about law school of case for me was meeting Professor uh, Henry King. Uh, he was a, a, a great man and, and he had recently come to case law school as a professor uh, in, in the early 80s. And I had an opportunity to, to spend some time speaking with Professor King. And he was a, um, one of the lawyers in the Nuremberg trials. Um, and what I took from that was how, how important it was in the, in the ability to use the law for good. And, um, and I always, in my career after leaving law school, had thought about, wow, how great that was. He was able to you know, do good with, do good with, with the law um, and you know, for a good cause. And the way my career developed, um, I was initially a commercial litigator um, and honestly wasn't particularly fulfilling. Um, I was a commercial litigator. Um, and then in 1997, one day, someone um, referred to me a woman whose uh, four-year-old autistic son was sexually molested um, at a preschool. And there weren't lawyers that specialized in this. And of course, in law school, there's no major, you don't know about this. But as I said, you know, I knew how to think critically and I, and I had a good foundation and the case really interested me. And I, and I, and I said to this woman, let me look into this. The, the story was, was horrific. And what I found out was that this school had hired a convicted pedophile. And as uh, shocking as that is, what I found out is that it happens all the time. And so um, I took that case on and it literally changed my life. Um, it was so rewarding in so many ways that I decided to dedicate my career to representing kids who had been molested. Um, and that's how it started for me. Um, and my practice has grown from that. And um, so now over, over decades, I've been doing this and the practice has grown substantially. I have about 50 lawyers now um, across the country that work at my firm. And I feel very blessed to be able to focus on this area because, you know, it reminds me of, you know, what I learned in law school from Professor King, being, being able to use the law for good. And, um, you know, it, it is rewarding. So what I remember about being a law student in the mid eighties um, is the video game on our breaks across the street from the law school in that little deli that I don't know if it still exists or, or what it is now. Um, actually, I think it's a hotel now when I remember because I went back to give a speech at Case and, and I think I stayed in that, that building. It's a hotel now. Um, but yeah, I remember uh, walking through the snow uh, in between classes and going over and getting a bite and, and playing, uh, not a video game, a, um, it was a video game, but one of the first kinds of video games, uh, you know, the, the standalone machine. 
Um, I remember spending a lot of time in the law library. It was a great, it was a great facility. Uh, it was a pretty new building. Um, the facilities were excellent. And so spent a lot of time, uh, you know, in, in the library um, and also got to enjoy that, that part of Cleveland up on Murray Hill um, and some of the great little restaurants over there and, and kind of places to hang out. And so um, I also remember some of the really great Italian food in Little Italy right there. I, I was in my office working on cases and uh, uh, yeah, I received the call and I was was taken aback. I thought, wow, that's <laughs> uh, it, it made me feel like uh, really good. Uh, it made me feel like, you know, wow, I've I've you know, I've worked hard in my career and, and it's and it, it, it feels nice to kind of go back home and, and be recognized in that way. Um, and one of the first things I did was, of course, share with my kids and um, my my older son just finished law school just took the bar. My younger son uh, is just starting law school. And so um, my whole family, all my kids are kind of involved in one way with, with the law. And so uh, it felt good to share with my family and of course my wife. And uh, so it's a, it's a nice accomplishment. I always feel very blessed to be in the area of practice that I'm in uh, because it is rewarding. And I, and I get a lot of feedback from clients. You know, um, I always say what we do is um, help victims heal, but we do that through giving them a voice in the civil litigation. So getting the call from case and, and recognition of, of, of the work, uh, uh, is, it's a really a wonderful feeling. I, I do appreciate uh, the importance of, of nurturing the, you know, being there for the law school and, and being an, an alumni. Um, I have been um, in contact with the law school over the last decade. Um, on a regular basis. Um, I've been able to uh, go back to the law school and make a presentation um, at the law school um, about some of my cases. And I also have a chance yearly to meet with uh, the dean or the assistant dean and to talk about what's happening at the law school and to, and, and to you know, I've been in a fortunate position to be able to support the law school. So I, I have always felt um, you know, that connection and that importance uh, of, 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 of being there for the school. So staying engaged, not only with the law school, but um, you know, I, I mentor a lot of, a lot of young lawyers now um, and that's important. You know, I remember, of course, as a young lawyer, having people in my life um, who, who, who made a difference and, and can, could give uh, some valuable advice. Um, of course, it all starts with having that law school education and having that degree to be able to do what I do. Um, so, you know, we never forget where we come from and uh, that, that remains important. In this area of practice I'm in, there's a lot of high profile cases. And for me, um, it became a really important part of helping the case. Um, and I say that for, for a couple of reasons. One is um, when I first started doing these cases, um, it really was more of a taboo subject to even talk about. Um, and, and that's the nature of, of, of this abuse is that victims are silenced um, and they're afraid to talk about it. But what I found out is that when victims see other victims coming forward and having a voice, there's this collective empowerment that they feel and it helps them come forward and get help. And at the end of the day, that, that's what it's all about. Um, it also helps uh, me to, to, to learn about facts and get evidence in the case because people, there's always people in these cases who know and were not able to talk about it or are shut down and may have something to say. And so, you know, so one of the things we use strategically is the media. In these cases, and um, you know, and there, there's a there's a technique to that, and so so many times after we're we're in the media, um, we hear from other victims and witnesses who have important information uh, to help with the case, and so yeah, so you you use it when you can um, in in the right way within the within the bounds. Yeah, we have seen a, um, a drastic change um, in the legal landscape for these cases. Many states now have enacted windows where they've eliminated statute limitations for childhood victims of sexual abuse uh, for a period of time. 
And what that does, um, it allows victims to have a voice and begin to heal. Um, it also exposes predators and institutions that enable them. And that makes the world a safer place. So I do feel really good about that. And when I look back, I mean, I've seen so many changes. Um, I've been fortunate to be involved in, in a lot of in, important um, cases with important legal decisions and opinions that have um, had a positive impact uh, on protecting victims. Um, and But the most important thing for me is, is I continue to hear from the victims I've represented over the, over the decades um, and how just having a voice um, has helped them in their lives. And, and, uh, and that, that's the best part of it. For me, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very supported by my family, my wife and all my kids. And, and, you know, it, it's a dark world that I live in, in, in the kind of cases I handle. Um, and it's such a blessing to have that light in my life. Um, and so, you know, it's important to have all of it and, and, and to be able to, you know, do the hard work, um, but also in, in enjoy the blessings.